Emma, amazing job on this film. Who'd have thought that the World War II genre and horror would be just as equally impactfully suspenseful? It's an amazing job. Uh, Jovan, first of all, I heard that you guys had a boot camp of sorts um, and everybody got nicknames. At least all your cast members told me everybody got nicknames. What was your nickname? Oh man, I can't even, I think mine was like Boise. It was like related to my character. There was another one, I can't remember. That had something to do with like me being the most fit of the group. <laughs> and I'm sure that they'll deny that, but it was true. Like we all, I mean, I was fortunate to have gotten the role a little bit earlier than the rest of the cast. So I started training like immediately, like going to the gym, getting a trainer before I flew to England. So when it was time to do the boot camp, when we're doing the PT, the physical training and all that, it was just like, it wasn't easy, but it was easier for me than some others. So it had to have something to do with like that. And well, it must have been, you must have been the best in shape because everyone else complains that it was the worst part of the whole experience. <laughs> it was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Chloe, Chloe's no shrieking violet. She she looks she looks uh, sh just as she has a gun um, makes it, it's perfect for her in the backdrop of World War II. Can you talk to me about Chloe's backstory? Yes. So Chloe's backstory. So she uh, was born and bred in France, and uh, she was uh, she loved music very much, and she loved animals. So she wanted to be a veterinarian, and so she went to London to find her experience because she wanted to leave this small town of Ciel Blanc and wanted to have her own experience. So she went in London, fell in love with a man called Daniel. And uh, one day she received a note from her mom saying that uh, the German has arrived in her village and she decided at this moment to leave and to go back to help her family. So she packed up all her stuff and arrived into Ciel Blanc and straight after that it's been four years of craziness and terrifying moment in her life and her entire life have been taken away from her. Wow, that's crazy. Um, and we see the, the story's eyes through Boyce, Boyce's eyes. Um, can you talk to me about his backstory? Because I feel that he's, he's, I don't wanna, he's not a pacifist by any means, but, we, but he's definitely, um, he doesn't want to kill just to kill. And can you talk to me about his backstory and kind of how he got to this place where he is with all these other soldiers? Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing is that, like you said, he's not a pacifist. He just, he's trying to pick his battles and he wants to do everything he has to do before it gets time to kill people. Sure. And I think, of course, he is the moral compass of this film, so along with Chloe, and it's something where he just wants to try to find the fine line of getting things done in the most efficient way. And he also wants to find where he fits in this group of people who are all experienced in war in a sense and he's the new guy who literally three months ago was cutting grass outside of his house you know what I mean mm -hmm. and he's just war wasn't something that he was he had ever imagined that he'd be a part of and now that he's in it he wants to fit in and do his job and do it well but also be able to save some lives and you know avoid sure. just recklessly killing I think that was the, the through line for boys for me I think this script is great um, because it is it starts off just as intense as a World War II movie just as uh, any other World War II movie would, but it takes so many different directions. So what was it about this script, a scene in particular, that you guys were like, this is, this, this is something I definitely want to be involved in? Well, um, the, entire, the, the entire film is, is kind of uh, crazy and, and funny as well, and so uh, I was the last one to uh, arrive on board, and when I discover Chloe's character, I really get attached to uh, strengths and the fact that she was a fighter. And um, I'm coming from a, like a, a woman family. Uh, and I grew up with my mom, my grandmother, my mom, and my sister, and they're all very strong women. So that was uh, important for me to make uh, Chloe as strong mentally and and physically as well. Well, Chloe, uh, she's one of the only females in this film, and she definitely holds her own against every male in this film. Can you talk to me about how that helped your performance? Um, it, it was it was amazing because they all got amazing experience in in work films and so it, they've been very genuine with me and they helped me a lot uh, and they guide me so much uh, for doing it and uh, so that, that that was fantastic to be able to to, to be part of such a uh, such a cool crew. She's nice. much tougher than all of us, to be clear. <laughs> she would have breezed through that boot camp, we're, I'm we're, sure. We were complaining a lot about a lot of things on set, like, oh, my shoulder's on my back, and she's just, like, waving her gun around just like a champ, so. <laughs> I, I she was, was helping us a lot more than, I would say, than the other way around, to be honest. Now, um, science fiction and horror films are usually cautionary tales. Uh, what do you want people to take away as a cautionary tale for Overlord? It has a fine line between right and wrong. And when it comes to heroes and villains, I think that we all kind of 
play both sides of that at times. And I think as long as your your morality is like in tune, mm. I think that's what separates you from being a hero and a villain. I think. No, I agree. I I completely agree with that. Um, now, what was the one of the hardest scenes for you guys to shoot in this? Because everything seems so intense and practical. Oh, for sure. But yeah. just immediately, what comes to mind is the first sequence, the aerial sequence, jumping out of the plane. That was rough. That was a lot, a lot of moving parts, a lot of rigs, a lot of actually being in the, being suspended in the air, doing a lot of spinning and stuff. And I was just like, oh God, this is hell. But I'm sure it's gonna look great. So just let me, <laughs> come on, baby, let's get through it. That was definitely the hardest for me. Yeah, I mean, uh, for me it was the. Um, Seen with the mistake when I need to fight with it, and I've been uh, very, very happy. And uh, that Julius actually let me doing it at, by, with the help of Bad Robot Empowerment, and they've been uh, very encouraging me of uh, making this in. But yeah, the physical part was quite hard, and staying in the era of the 1940 was very important. Very, um, I, it was very important to never leave the things like by holding guns or crossing legs or you know usual things. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, being being in the 1940s, I mean, think about that. But this was all done with a lot of practical effects and a lot of practical makeup, and I think that adds such a depth to this film. Uh, can you talk to me about um, some of that stuff and, and the collaboration between you and the director? Because I think that everyone was saying that this is a pretty collaborative collaborative effort for this film. Yeah, definitely. I think you know you know JJ and Bad Robot Paramount have been developing this for a while. Mm -hmm. So when you spend a lot of time on, on a script and it goes through you know it goes through the rounds you can become really attached to an idea of what this character is going to be, what this setup is going to be like, and it's been amazing that they cast all of us and allowed us to still have a voice in how we were going to portray our characters. And as a statement as far as like the, the prosthetics being like conventional versus CGI, they had a really nice balance. Sure. You know, the stuff that you absolutely need computer generation for, you know, they, they were able to do it, but if you could have the, you know, traditional effects, it kind of gives it like this kind of classic classic war movie or classic horror movie feel because you're seeing something that's there and you don't have to look at an X on a green screen and sure. just be like, mm. yeah, that helped us a lot, yeah. like immensely.